G'day guys, how's it going? It's Gary from Compsci Guy IT. In today's video, we're going to be creating our bomb blueprint. But before we get started, uh, if you'd like to use the same asset that I'm using in this video for our bomb, I'll show you how you can get a hold of it. It's not something I created myself. I actually went to a website called Turbo Squid. It's free to sign up and pretty easy to use. All you have to do is type in the search criteria, and you'll get a whole bunch of assets pop up. This might be a pretty cool place to come to if you don't own your own 3D modeling software or don't know anyone who can create these assets for you. But what we're wanting is something that we can use in the engine, so we're going to need an FBX file. We can refine this by going up to Formats, checking the FBX box. Now we've only got one option here for free if you want to pay. There's some really nice looking bombs here, but I'm just going to go with the free version. And from here you can just click on download, and it's all pretty straightforward from there on out. I've actually already downloaded this, so I'm not going to bother doing it again. So once um, you've done that, just go back into your engine and select the folder you want to import it to. Click on import in the content browser, navigate to the folder, select the FBX file press open, then click on either import or import, both will work. Don't worry about this warning, it's fine. So next thing that we want to do is create a destructible mesh out of our static mesh. So when the bomb explodes, it's actually going to fly into pieces. So just right click on there, go up to create destructible mesh. Right, uh, sorry, double click on destructible mesh and here in the destructible settings uh, check the box that says enable impact damage and under fracture settings um, we want a cell site count of say 500 you can use any figure you like but just bear in mind that the bigger this number is uh, the longer it will take for the engine to calculate the fractures so 500 is fine I think and then just fracture mesh just bear in mind that um, when you click on Fracture Mesh, it's going to appear like the engine is frozen. Um, you won't be able to click on anything or move anything around. Um, I even went to the uh, task manager to see what was going on, and it was saying that the engine had you know, stopped being responsive, but uh, it came back again. So it was, it's, this is just what happens when... Um, the engine is doing its thing, so don't worry about it too much. It shouldn't take too long. Here we go. It's towards the end now. And once this is done, okay, we can see sort of like the amount of fractures and look it's going to kind of have. Um, you can go up to a thousand if you want. Um, I did get some unexpected behavior when I tried 5,000. Um, it took a really long time and then for some reason it wasn't working properly. So, But a thousand worked fine, I just didn't do a thousand this time because it takes longer. But um, 500 is fine for, for us for this video, I think. Um, next thing that we want to do is go to effects under destructible settings. And we'll have two options here, 0 and 1. Basically, this is the state of our mesh. Uh, 0 is prior to uh, the, the fractures, and 1 is uh, after the fractures. So if you look up here, preview depth 0, get no fractures, preview depth 1, this is where the fractures are applied. So we want to actually uh, import a particle system and sound right here. Now I just want to take the time to thank TJ Ballard, who's actually an engine support technician at Epic Games. He helped me out with this. I didn't even know about this until he came along and said, hey, maybe do it this way. Um, I was trying to do stuff within blueprints and uh, I was getting some unexpected behavior. He had a look at it, said it should work, um, but for some reason wasn't. So he's got top men on the job and just showed me this, and I actually think this is a lot better than what I was trying to do. The, um, it's a lot neater, there's a lot less uh, visual script involved at the end of the day, so um, I think this is great, I think we'll 
you guys should know about this. So what I'm going to do is go to where I've got my asset, the particle system, and I'm choosing one that I imported, well, oh, sorry, I migrated from a different project. Um, you, there's one in your starter content which you can use if you like, but I think this one looks a lot better. If you want to use this one, you can get hold of it. It's actually, if you go to where are we? the marketplace, and here we have the vehicle game. Just uh, create an instance of or project of the vehicle game while you're in that project. Uh, migrate the particle system from there, and you'll be able to use it. Um, it's pretty easy to do. Just right click, asset actions, and go to migrate. So I'll just select that. I'll go to use selected asset. And for sound, I'll just click here and go to Explosion 1. Save. Okay, so now we can create our blueprint. We just right click on our destructible mesh. And under Asset Actions, create our blueprint using this. So migrate to the ball. Click on the folder that you want to put it in. Name it, BP Bomb. BP for blueprint and while we're in here just select the component go down to physics check simulate physics under collision uh, check the box simulation generates heat events and we can go over to our graph um, just right click hit to bring in a hit event drag in a destructible as a getter Drag out, apply damage. Connect these up. Then we just drag across hit location to hit location. It's basically saying apply damage to the hit location. And hit normal to impulse dir, which is impulse direction. It's basically saying apply the damage in the direction that the hit um, happens in. So. And that's pretty much it. Oh, almost forgot. Um, damage amount, 5,000. This is These are just the figures that TJ gave to me. You can experiment with them if you like, see um, if it gives you different effects, but I think it works fine. And then compile. And we are now done. So we can actually go to our blueprint, drag an instance of that in, and test it out, see what happens. 180, I'll just go to here, move it around a little bit, and around the side, okay. Now, let's test it out, see if it works. Go to simulate. That's pretty cool. I, I like that. That works beautifully. And that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something, got something out of it. If you did, maybe think about liking the video, um, leaving a comment, um, subscribe if you want. And if you know anyone who can use this video, share it with them. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys, bye.